This video is the continuation of Reed's representation theorem. Uh, in that first video, I have given you some of the part of the proof, and in this video, we will continue to the second part of the proof. So, in the last video, I already said that we will be considering the second case that f is not equal to zero, such that f of x will not be equal to zero. And we will find out a unique representation of f of x in the terms of inner product of x comma y. So, for proving this, now we h is in Hilbert space. We know that h is in a Hilbert say, space. So, the null space of f will be. It's obvious. It's obvious that it will be will be a proper subspace of h this is, will be the proper subspace of h so, and now what is null space let us consider m be such the set says that it consists of all those x such that f of x is equal to zero so if suppose this is our domain h and we choose all the x such that if we take a transformation, if we take a linear uh, transformation, such that f of x will tend to 0. f of x will be equal to 0. Then this is called the null space and null space is the proper subspace of h. Now we need to prove that the subspace m is a closed subspace. Now we need to prove that M is a closed subspace for proving M is closed subspace. What we need, it's basic. Uh, if we have to prove um, a subspace is a closed subspace, then we take a sequence and we show that the sequence converges to a limit point and that limit point is, is also in that subspace. Then we say that that subspace, subspace is a closed subspace. Now what we have to show that if f of x in tends to 0, then f of x also tends to 0 because we already said that m is a set such that it consists of all the element x where f of x is equal to 0. So, xn tends to x and xn is the element of h. Why xn tends to x and xn and x will be the element of h? We know that h is a helper space and h is complete. So, xn tends to x if xn is the sequence of h then x is the limit point of the sequence and x is also the element of h. Now, if f of xn tends to 0, then it's obvious that f of xn also tends to f of x. Why it tends to f of x? Because we know that f, we already stated that the proof um, in the theorem that f is continuous and f is linear. So, f is continuous that's why f of xn will tends to f of x. Now if f of xn tends to 0, then this is obvious that f of x will also tends to 0. By this we can say that the limit point, the limit point f of x is also f of x. Sorry. Thus we can say that thus m is closed now now x is the element of m and m is a closed subspace so by decomposition theorem Uh, the students who don't know about the decomposition theorem, they can request me to make a video. I will definitely mm, take this theorem 
in my next video and I'll explain that uh, what is decomposition theorem if you wish. Now, if by decomposition theorem we know that H, the H is Hilbert space and M will be the direct sum of M perpendicular. And what is M perpendicular here? M perpendicular is the set, is the set of elements, suppose X dash, such that X dash is perpendicular to M. So, M perpendicular is the set which consists of all those elements, the elements which is perpendicular on M. So, by decomposition theorem, we can write that H is the direct sum of M and M perpendicular. Now, let us take that, let us take Z, a unique vector. What is unique vector? If we take the norm, we will get equal to 1. If we take Z, a unique vector and Z is the element of M1. Now, let us consider any element uh, which is in the form um, f of x, z minus f of z, x. Now, we, knew, we need to show that this element is the element of m. And now, to show the element, any element is n, we need to show that f of x means f of that element will be equal to 0. Now, let us take us that f of f of x z minus f z x will be equal to 0 or not. Then we can, because f is linear, we can easily write like this. And now, this both term is equal to equal, so this will be equal to 0. Now, by here, we can show that f of x z minus f z x is the element of z. There is no doubt in this. Now, we already said that z is the element of m perpendicular and this is the element of m. So, inner product of, inner product of f x z minus f z x comma z will be equal to 0 because, because, uh, z is the element of m1 and fxz minus fzx is the element of m. So, if we take the inner product of these two elements, this will be equal to 0. Now, by basic, um, applying the basic properties of inner product, we can split this term and this will give us f of xz, comma z minus f of z, x, comma z. Let us assume that this is any scalar, so this we can take as f of x, this will be equal to z in a product z, and this will be, now this is equal to 1 because we consider that this is a unique vector, so f of x, unique element, sorry, unique element, vector or element, it's okay. So, this will be 1 minus f of z in a product x comma z and now this can be written as f of x minus which is equal to 0 which is equal to 0 this is equal to 0 this can be written x f of z bar z equals to 0 which is f of x is equal to in a product of x comma f z bar z equals now this can be represented as y this can we can write this as equal to y and this can be written as x comma y because we choose a z a unique vector in m1 and this is unique uh, this is unique because we fixed z due to this this term will be a unique term and this can be represented as y now and we can write f of x is equal to the inner product of x comma y. So here is the proof of this theorem. Um, thank you so much. Like my channel, subscribe me. If you have any doubt related to it, you can um, comment below. Thank you.